Hello again, John here, and welcome to episode 7 of Tutorial 37. Yeah, new tutorial! Seven episodes into it. Okay, it's gonna be a long one. Uh, sup of my drink there. Right, so the previous episode we did an, an introduction to Python. We didn't go through many instructions, we just outlaid the basics of Python. Now, in this tutorial, we are going to do a very basic, basic thing in Python just to understand what Python is all about. All right? So, not Python, Pygame. <laughs> anyway, so Pygame is a gaming engine for Python. And the way we're going to write the gaming engine is to have essentially three steps, but there may be, may be a few more, but essentially it's three steps, right? The step, first step is the processing of the input, our controls, what we're gonna do, shoot, fire, left, right, up, down, jump, backwards, forwards, all that jazz. Then updating the game. So what, what happens to the game with those processors and what, and updating the enemies. And the last thing is rendering the screen, which allows us to put the things on the screen, blah, 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 and do that. And then we have a timer that waits until the next cycle, because you don't want it running a thousand times a second. So what you do is you say, okay, we're gonna get this to run at 60 frames a second. So we put a timer on that allows, that runs through this cycle 60 times a second, all right? Now, Python, uh, uh, Pygame uses the colors as in red, green, blue. So when you tell it you want to see a red color, you don't type in red or anything like that, you'd use the RGB values. And so, uh, and the reason for the RGB values is the primary colors are red, green, and blue. They're the three parameters that we'll put into the color settings. So to get the other colors, we have to say turn on red and green to get yellow turn on green and blue to get cyan turn on blue and red to get magenta and so on so all of the colors are on a white no colors is black and you can out of those three numbers so 255 by 255 by 255 gives something like 16 million different combinations of color we're only interested in about 10. <laughs> it's like, like overkill. And so to represent those colors, we're gonna have to do something like this. So the top one is black, so everything's zero, yeah? And it's red, green, blue, hence why I've colored the numbers. So the first number is red, second number is green, third number is blue. To get white, it's 255 across the board. To get red, you just put 255 in the red column and zero, zero, and the other two, and so on and so forth. So this is just to make sure that you understand the mechanics of color. It's not the same as 64 where red is two, yellow is seven, blah, blah, blah. We make the colors by combining the three basic color, primary colors, which is red, green, and blue. Right, so let's get started, shall we? So. Using the Python, using the Pygame book from the Raspberry Pi, page six, I think it is. Another slurp of my drink. We'll create another file. So let's shut this one down and we'll create a new one uh, called 02tut02.py. So this is now going to be the part that our very first Pi game thing. Now, they are talking about um, in this uh, chapter is just basically setting up the first file. So the first thing we've got to do in Python is we have to import Pi game. If we don't import Pi game, then it won't know we want to use it. So we have to import Pi game, and then we have to initialize it. Oops. 
that's it and at the very end we have to make sure we close it down so and pi game dot quit not quite quit so this one um, terminates the display so whatever we put in there it closes it down and this one actually closes the, the Python Pygame file down um, and this allows us then to have a clean exit if we didn't include that we'd leave a process running all the time don't know why it does it but it does it but they don't mention it in the book but this is what I found out so what we are going to try and do is we are going to try and create um, the St. George's flag, right? And so to create the St. George's flag, we've got to be able to put lines and stuff on the screen. But first, we need to create a screen. And the way to do that is we create a variable, call, we can call, call it screen, yeah, screen equals and then we tell Python we need uh, tell Pygame that we need a display setting up so we can do something with it. So we do set mode, and we give it a tuple. That's a two number variable, and we tell it right. I want a 640 wide by 480 screen, please, and. So we should be able to run that. So blink and you miss it. You ready? One, two, three. There you go. Do you see it? And it blows up. Oh, and do you know why that errored? It's because I put a capital letter. You ready? Blink and you miss it. One, two, three, black screen, and it goes. So we've got it to create the screen. But to stop it disappearing, we've got to be able to pause the game in some way. And the way that they've got in this book is by doing a, by doing a, a, a looper. So they've got while true loop. And that's it, just loops. So if we run this now, the black screen should stay on. Ooh. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. Um. Okay, I was going to be clever, but I won't. I'll stick with what they've got in the book. So we create a, um, a looper in the program that allows us to um, stall the thing, as stall the game, as well as perform what we want to do. Now we want to put a rectangle on the screen. Yeah. So pi game, and this is this is what they've put. So pi game, and then it's draw. Now the draw command has loads and loads of stuff in it, right? So there's just loads and loads and loads of stuff in there. And what we need to do is we need to do rectangle. So R E rec like that. And then we tell it what screen, we, what display we want, which is our screen variable and what color. So it has to be a, two, uh, a triple. So let's make it red, like that. And then we have to tell it the start and end points. Yeah. So we have to say start X and Y and end um, X and Y, I think. So it's, so it's, we'll start at the top corner and we'll make it 50 by 30. Ooh, my back's hurting, there we go. So this should draw a screen, uh, draw a rectangle on our sur dis uh, screen surface, color red, starting at zero, zero, and going 50, 30. And then we have to up 
update the screen. We have to tell Pi Game, right now I've messed around with the screen, please update it. So, and like that. So, we should be able to run it, and away we go. While true is not defined, yeah. <sighs> and that's probably why it didn't work to start with. So we'll put that there, because I'm trying to be clever. Ugh. Right, let's see if that works. Bring that back, because indentation means something. Does that work? No, it, it's wanting us to, it's wanting an instruction here. Okay, A equals one. I just wanted to pause it. There we go. So it, that while needs at least an instruction in and out just to comment. So there we go. It's drawn a red rectangle in the top corner. So if we want to move that, yeah we just change the coordinates. Now, this is where we just have to mess around with what we know. Yeah, so we just need to, let's see, let's move it down, shall we? Let's move it to 200 and 150, like it says in the book. In fact, it says draw another, draw another rectangle, so we're gonna do that. Right, copy that. And we'll create it to the screen. This term we want green, like it says in the book. So zero, two, five, five. And this one we're going to position at 200 and, 200 and 150. And we'll keep it with the same distance, same thing. So if we run this, we should end up with two rectangles on the screen. Hey, there we go. This is what we want. And and this is how we put objects on the screen. So, with that in mind, there is something else that we need to do when we are messing around with Python. Right, because not all the time um, Python allows you to come out cleanly and so we need to be able to tell it that we've quit out of it and that's where we need to in here is just test for if we've done something so first thing we'll create a new variable called run and we'll set it to true <laughs> if I can spell it right so run so while run and then here we need to uh, check what is known as an event and an event is where the mouse has moved or the keys been pressed and things like that so what we need to do we do for an event in pygame dot event dot get so basically at that moment in time pi we are asking pygame to get the event at that moment in time, all right? And then we're gonna test the event. So if event, yeah, dot type equals, remember the double, pi game dot quit, <laughs> quiet, quit, pi game dot quit, oh, there we go, that's better. And it's even done the italic sense for us. Col and put a colon because it's an if statement. Then we want to make run equal false. And that's it. So basically what we're doing is we're waiting, what we're waiting for is that as soon as we hit, say that cross there in the pie game window, this, it's going to set run to be false, which then makes this false, so it just drops straight out, straight into the quit. Yeah, so if we run it, 
because before I had to press that if you remember. Now we can just cross that and it quits cleanly. So that's basically our our template for Pi, this Pi game uh, thing. So we are going to do the um, St. George's flag, right? So to do the St. George's flag, we need we need to know what it looks like. So here we go. Let me just copy this picture. Here we go. That is the St. George's flag. So now we have to figure out how we're going to create this flag. Yeah? So let me just put that to one side and create it in here. And so if we run this again, we have got black screen with a red square uh, rectangle, a uh, green rectangle and a red rectangle. And what we need is that. That's what we need. Yeah. So we need to be able to think, okay, what do we need to do here? Well, the first thing is we need to make the border, we need to make the background white. We need to make it white. So, and there is a command to do that. But first things first, we need to define what white is because we don't want to have to keep putting these three numbers in. So let's create a variable and say white is equal to 255, 255, 255. Uh, might as well do the red as well is equal to 255 comma zero comma zero there we go so we've created two variables for the two colors we're going to use now to fill the screen after we've created it we need to fill the screen so it's literally the variable screen dot fill all right and then we just open and we put the color in we want to fill it. Okay, let's see what happens there. There you go. So now we've got our white background with the two squares. So first thing's done. We've got the white background. So now we need to create a cross. And how do we create a cross? to put two rectangles over the top of each other. Yeah, so let's do the first one. So we want to do the horizontal rectangle. So we'll use the, the lines that we've got here at the moment and we'll create a cross. So we'll change this to red because now we've got the colors already set and we'll do the same with this one as well. All right, and the um, because we've got a screen of 640 by 480, uh, mm, let's make it easier. Let's make it easier. Right, 600 by 400. There we go. Makes maths a bit easier. So what we want to do is we want to put a, 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 a rectangle across the horizontal middle part of the screen. So we have to work out the center point. So the center point of um, 400 is 200. And so we say, right, that's the center point. So how, uh, how far above do we want to go and how far below do we want to go? So, so if it's 200, I think we should make it 60 wide. Yeah. So what we need to tell it is where to start so we're starting at x0, so it's right on the left hand side. And we want it, so if we're making it 60 wide, half of 60 is 30, minus from 200 is 150. So we need, uh, not 150, 170. So we need it to start on the left hand side, 170 pixels down. 
And then we need to tell it we want it to go all the way across the screen, which is 600. And we said we was going to make it 60 deep. Yeah. So we'll rem out that one. And we'll just run it and see what we get. There we go. So now we've got our part of our cross on the screen at the right place as well. So the next one we need to do is the vertical one. So it's the same philosophy again. So we're going to draw a rectangle on the screen and now we want it to be halfway. So that's going to be 600 divided by 2 is 300 and make it 60. Make it 60 wide. So 300 minus 60 divided by 2 is 270. So we need to start it at x270. So that's across the top of the screen up to 270. Zero because we want to start it at the top of the screen. And we want to make it 400 deep. So it goes all the way to the bottom. And no. No. We want to make it 60. Because that's the X. We want to make it 60 wide and then 400 deep. Alright. So if we run it now. There we go. That is the St. George's flag. Easy peasy when you know, isn't it? Easy peasy. So. We can do another one. Uh, we can do another easy one, I suppose. Another easy one. Okay, let's do another easy one. It should be pretty, pretty easy. So we'll create another one. So, oh, three. Tutorial. Tutorial.py. And this time, let's see. What do we want to do now? Yeah, I think we should do that one. That's going to throw a spanner in the works. So the one we're going to do now is this one. How about that? So we're going to do the St. Andrew's flag. So logically, what do we need to do? Well, obviously, it's a blue background. So we need to create a blue background. And then we've still got two rectangles yeah effectively we've got two rectangles but they're at an angle yeah two rectangles at an angle it'd be interesting to see if that would would work but I don't think it will so we need to find another command that allows us to do those slanty line, slanty rectangles. So first things first, let's do a copy and paste. All right, let's get rid of that, get rid of that. Now, so we need another one called blue. So that's going to be uh, red, green, blue. So it's going to be 0, 0, 2, 5, 5. And we need to make the background blue. Blue. So let's run this. We should get a blue background with red cross. And we... Oh, wow. <laughs> a bit tough on the eyes, that is. <sighs> right, so that's done that. Now... We can't use rectang rectangle because it's a rectangle. So we need something else and we need to draw slanty lines. And there is a command to draw slanty lines, which is pygame.draw. So you need to look at the draw object. It's got a lot of stuff in it. And this one is polygon. And this allows us to draw a polygon. So it's the same thing as re rectangle. We have to give it the screen. We have to tell it what colour it's going to be. So in this particular case, it's going to be white. And then we need to give it the um, points where it's going to draw to. 
Yeah. So we, we do a start point and then we work our way around. So they're all in um, tuples like this. So we have to think which one are we going to do first. So we do the top corner, to, so the top left hand corner to the bottom right hand corner white strip. So we need to start off at the top corner. So, but it, as you can see from here, let's bring it back. It starts a bit further down, look. It starts a bit further down, yeah? And also, um, it starts a bit further across. So that's the X and that's the Y, yeah? So we need to tell it to draw from there to there, to there, to there, to there, and back up to there, and then back to there. That's what we need to do. All right. So first thing is to is first point is this one here. This is the first point here. This is what we're going to start with. So that's going to be x is something, y is zero. So let's just put some old numbers in there. Uh, okay. Let's do that. Oops. Where? Cursor, where is it? There is it. Let's do that. Say it's 40 in. If it's not right, we'll, we'll, we'll modify it. And then the next one is right. Where is it going to? So the second point is where is it going to go? Which is right at the very bottom. So that is 600 because we're going all the way to the right hand side. And we're going to. Um, go down to 400 minus 40. 400 minus 40. So that's 360. Yeah. And then we need to tell it to go to the corner. So let's go back to here. So we've told it, we've just come here now. Now we need to do that corner and then that corner, and we're just going to work our way around. So the the bottom corner we know what that is because that's the size of the screen so that's going to be 600 by 400 and then the next one is where we're bringing it back so x is going to be smaller and so we are going to is it we said 40 at the top so we better do 40 at the bottom so that's going to be 560 comma come on 560 comma uh, yeah, 400, isn't it? So it's the bottom corner. Okay, and then we've brought it. We brought it in. Now we've got to go back up to the top. So that's back to zero, isn't it? X is zero because we're going back to the top. So X is zero, and Y. If we might as well make it 40, like we've made X is 40. And then we tell it to go to zero, zero. Yeah. And then we finish it off by going to, no, that should finish it off. Hang on. So bring the picture down. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six points. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Okay, let's run that and see what happens. Oh, we have a bit of a blow up. What is it saying? Function must take, takes, must take most four arguments. Okay. 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 Oh, got to put a set of brackets around all the all the vectors because it take the polygon takes three parameters, which is the display, the color information, and then brackets around all of the vectors. So that should now work. Hey, oh. 
look half bad. That's not bad. <laughs> That's not bad. That is not bad at all. Okay, so we've got one line. So we just need to rinse and repeat. Right, so let's do the other one. So we'll just copy that. Because it's exactly the same format. It's just our starting point's different. So now if I go back to the snippet. So we're going to say we're going to start here. So we're going to start there. And then we're going to go to this point here. Then this point. Then this point. Back down to the bottom. We're here. And then that point. So that's six. So that's what we need to do. So first point was at the x is zero mark. And it was the bottom cut bottom but raised up a bit. And we say that's 40 now, don't we? So that's going to be 400 minus 40. So that's going to be 360. So that's our starting point. And then we zip up to the top corner. So y is going to be zero. Because we're right at the very top. But x is going to be 40 away from the 600 mark. So that's going to be 5, 560. Then we're going to go to the corner, which is in this case 600 by 0, because y is at the top. And then we're going to come down 40 in y. So y is going to be 40, but x is still going to be 600. Yeah. So we've just done these three points. So x, x is minus 40 from uh, 600, but because he's at the top, y is 0. y is 0 here, but x is 600. But now we've gone down here, so y is going to, oops, y is going to be 40, but x is still at the maximum, which is 600. So now we need to come down here, where y is at the maximum. So let's move to the next one. So where y is at the maximum, so y is at 400. And x is coming in short of the, the, the line so that's going to be 40 because we said we're going to be 40 then we need to go to the corner so that means x is 0 and y is 400 and that's our six points right let's run it let's see what we get there we go there we go the St. Andrew's Scottish flag. Hey. Right. So, how long have we been going? Ah, 33 minutes. Right. Your homework, if you want to do it, your homework, if you want to do it, is to create your flag. Right? Is to create it. Now, I have created, I have already done the UK Union Jack. So let me take a screenshot of it. Because I'm not going to put it on the screen because certain people freeze frame and look at the code. So let's do a quick snippet of that. There we go. So I have done the Union Jack. I've done the British flag. So, um, and this, he's got to think, got to think about this. Because you have to start thinking in layers. What's going to sit on top of each other? What is going to sit where? How we're going to sit it? Now, I've done the code for this. So I will put that up in my... Um, forum after everybody submitted their flags so the f homework for you guys is uh, and ho um, hopefully your flag is a simple thing with just squares and rectangles and polygons yeah but your homework is to recreate your flag in Pygame using what's in the Pygame book from the Raspberry Pi chapter one i think it is and let me go back yeah chapter one shapes and paths with pi game all right because they're going to circles in there 
and they're going to ellipses and do they do the polygon to do a line do lines because they'd create a triangle but they don't do the polygon so you've learned something here right and either tweet it to me or if you're a member of the forum put it into the into the make a post in the forum put the code there and the end result that you've got I'd like to see all you guys creating a flag right and see if you can understand how to create it and Stacy don't submit the Olympic rings we've seen it already I want you to do the flag you know even though it was very impressive your Olympic rings all right so we'll call it an end for that this episode I mean it's what 40 minutes coming up to so remember do the homework I want to see people putting flags up because if if I don't see people putting flags up and working out flags by the way ping me if you if you're struggling ping me you know we'll do this together that's the whole point of this is community project but if I don't see any flags then I know pe people are not interested and we don't want that so let's see if we can get this done and then we'll start getting on some fun stuff in a bit all right okay so if you like what I do hit that like button if you didn't like what I do fine hit the dislike button always leave me a comment because I try and answer them all and if you want to support me um, with um, tip jar or whatever patron um, please become a patron of mine you do get some exclusive access to the forum and other things depending on your level and all the money raised in patron is actually used for this channel you know in terms of buying books and stuff all right so with that i'll see you in the next episode take care bye i'd like to thank all the patrons that are contributing to my channel without you guys i wouldn't be able to do what i'm doing right now thank you very much